Hi folks, Nell here with Cassie with part two of a three part videos talking about Cassie and her world and her story. Um, so this is all about Cassie's world. Um, sorry, not Cassie's world. A little bit. It's about Cassie's life um, and the people in her life. So Cassie um, is the only biological child of Dr. Hofwinkel, who is a government uh, robotics scientist. <coughs> and Cassie is very much following in her father's footsteps. She is, she has a natural gift for technology and she has really developed um, and spent a lot of time working with technology and tinkering with technology and observing her father's work all throughout her life. She's been doing this. <coughs> um, Cassie, however, even though she is the only biological child of Dr. Dr. Hofwinkel, is not an only child. Uh, she does have a foster brother, Hal, <coughs> whose full name is Hal Bowman. Um, there's kind of a funny story behind that, but I'll talk a bit about Cassie for a bit longer. Um, so, Cassie's relationship with her father is very good. Um, Cassie kind of hero worships him, and she doesn't really interact much with people other than her father, her brother, and her father's four humanoid robots, the Chibot. Um, which, um, you can check in the previous video how her family ended up with these slow guys because, technically speaking, humanoid robots are illegal. They're banned. Um, but, uh, there were some strings they were able to be pulled to let the chi bots stay with them. You can see how tiny they are, actually. <laughs> They're very small. Anyway, uh, so Cassie doesn't really interact with many people outside of her immediate family. She stays kind of cooped up in um, the Hofwinkel residence, which is part work facility, part research labs, and a ever so slight, ever so small part of that is their living quarters. Um, one of the things about the Hofwinkel residence is that there's actually a very powerful supercomputer that is wired into the entire building um, that also takes up an entire floor just in its physical components. Um, it was literally an entire wing of the facility that is just filled with this supercomputer. The supercomputer's name, by the way, is Daisy, because that is what a very young Cassie and Hal named it. Uh, Dr. Hawkwinkle does not approve of giving computers names. Um, he says that tending towards um, personifying and humanizing technology, and that's a dangerous path. And he would know because one of his jobs um, for the government is to assess the human-like characteristics of um, robots and determine if they are crossing the line, essentially, um, and have to be scrapped. It sounds really bad when you think about it. <laughs> um, anyway, but Cassie and Hal have been calling Daisy Daisy for so long that they can't really call the supercomputer just a supercomputer. Daisy's pretty much a part of their family. Daisy is the house, but Daisy is also the big sister and the mom all in one. Uh, that's actually a good way to describe it. Dr. Hopwinkle is a good father, but he because of his work, can't always be there. Daisy, however, is always there and always willing to help her children out. 
because yes, she refers Daisy refers to herself um, using female pronouns and refers to Cassius here and Hal as her children. She cares about them a great deal. She's kind of tending more towards the incredibly sentient side, if you couldn't guess. So, one of the things that I mentioned in the previous video is that replacing damaged parts is a mainstream practice. Um, it's something that a lot of people have done. Um, and that includes Cassie. Now, the most visible part of her that has been replaced are her hands. Um, her hands actually resemble circuitry the entire way, um, though she does wear the gloves um, for manipulating objects as well. Um, so her hands, you can kind of sort of see the circuitry, but it's also partially covered. Um, however, that is not the only thing that has been replaced on Cassie, and Hal has also had a lot of parts of him replaced. However, if you were to ask them, Hal would say that he's completely organic, um, except for his eyes, and Cassie would say that she's completely organic except for her hands. And that is because they have been now in a series of serious accidents um, that almost have almost cost them their lives on multiple occasions. This is unfortunately one of the dangers of living in a secluded, uh, domed research city. Um, is that sometimes things go wrong and can take out entire swaths of the city. <coughs> and unfortunately, Cassius and Hal, being two of the youngest people in the city, do a lot of exploring and they've gotten caught in a lot, a lot of serious accidents. Um, but Dr. Hofwinkel, wanting to protect his children, has now on a number of occasions um, had the damaged parts of them replaced. He does specialize in robotics, remember. So had the parts replaced and let them heal up and just not told the two of them what happened and how badly hurt they were. In his mind, he's protecting them. However, the fact is, they would probably get into far less accidents if he actually told them the truth. Um, if they realized how dangerous the things they're doing, they might take precautions to not put themselves in so much danger. But, you know, just because he's a brilliant scientist does not mean that he's good with children. <laughs> Especially not his own. Um, <coughs> so at this point, actually, um, both of them, both um, Cassius and Hal, have had a lot of their body replaced and a number of the same parts over and over again. Um, for instance, Cassie has lost her hands, um, her current hands, or actually her fifth set of hands. Um, she has also lost her thighs um, about three times and Hal has lost his entire um, lower torso about two times now. And I mean the entire lower torso, like everything below the belly button he has lost now entirely twice. Yeah, they do not have good track records <laughs> for accidents. But like I said, they don't know that Dr. Hofwinkel has been replacing these parts and not telling them how seriously they were hurt. It's not a smart idea. That is not how you parent properly. <laughs> <coughs> the Chibots do know um, that 
the children have been hurt multiple times, but they are so simple-minded that they don't understand the difference really between themselves, so humanoid-looking robots, and actually flesh and, and actual flesh and blood people. Um, so when they've seen, you know, Cassie losing her hands and then getting a new pair and waking up and acting like there's the same hand she's always had, um, or has had since the very first accident, well, the Chibots go, oh, well that makes sense. When we break apart, we just replace it and life goes on. When actually it's a pretty big deal, um, what's, what's been happening. Um, <coughs> now, okay, I said I'd explain Hal's name. Um, because in the breakthrough video, um, when I was able to actually write a chunk of Cassie's story, um, there was a joke that, um, Hal's name is Hal Bowman, um, and, you know, his father works in robotics. Um, as I mentioned, he's actually a foster child, and... Hal Bowman was actually the name that was written on something that he was holding. Um, and no one has any idea who this kid actually is. Um, that's part of why in the breakthrough video, Hal says, when life names you Hal. He doesn't say, when your parents name you Hal. And that's because he has no recollection of that, if that was his actual name. As far as he sees it, Everything in life has conspired so that his name is Hal Bowman and he lives with someone who works with robotics and um, he has a sister that's very gifted with technology and their mother figure is a supercomputer. Um, <laughs> he sees a lot of humor in the situation. Uh, he's a lot more... I'd say he's also into sciences, but he's more into the soft sciences, um, where it starts applying more to people and interactions, um, rather than Cassie, who's more about the hard sciences, um, the fundamentals of things, and, of course, um, all about robotics and following in her father's footsteps. Hal doesn't really see a need to follow in Dr. Hoffwinkel's footsteps because Cassius has already got that side covered. 